I am very much happy and happiest man. Mr. Indra Kumar Gujral, Prime Minister of India. Honorable Chief Ministers, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to all of you to this special plenary session. Let me begin by conveying to Mr. Indra Kumar Gujral. It is Mr. Gujral's First day as the Prime Minister of India, very special for us in CII, and indeed, very special, I hope, for us. We are confident that politics will not hold back economic growth, economic development, and economic progress. This is the real confidence in us. Therefore, we decided to stay with the timing of the National Conference and our annual session because we do not quite share the concern of some about the state of politics impacting on the state of the economics. But this is not satisfactory, and we want to get back into the double-digit growth rate and go beyond the 12% so that the import policy and the credit policy, all of which have been announced in a span of 45 days, has brought back the feel-good factor, and it has brought which we will reach 8%. Prime Minister of India, whom I consider to be a special friend and partner of CII. Yesterday, when in a particular place, all the pulls and pushes of evolution of the Prime Minister was going on, Mr. Datta was quietly standing in a corner, and I noticed him there. <laughs> so he side, saw the side show. <laughs> Out of blue, I was emerging. The first thing he extracted from me was a promise to come here today. <laughs> and that is how I am here with you to express my pleasure to address this conference, your annual conference, I'm told. It is a happy coincidence that this gathering is also the first conference I'm addressing, as I said just now, as the Prime Minister. My presence here, ladies and gentlemen, is in keeping with the sentiment as far as the economy is concerned and, and to say the cliché, it is business as usual. As I look around and I find all of you sitting there, I know and I'm conscious that I'm amongst friends. When I look from benches all around, if I start mentioning the names of the friends who are sitting there, perhaps it will take me whole evening. Because each one of you, at one stage or the other of my life, I have profited from, benefited from the friendship. And I therefore feel grateful that you are here this afternoon to give me this opportunity. But I am confident also that this background of friendship and personal relationships that I have acquired over years, living in Delhi in various forms and shapes, will give me an opportunity and also a chance 
to gain from your friendship. And while gaining this, you will kindly not hesitate to tell me wherever you think I am faltering and wherever you think the policy needs a change. Your views, your comments will always be receiving, received with attention. That I can promise you to begin with. My dear friend Mr. Datta has mentioned, and rightly, that 50 years ago, India won its freedom. And I think it's a matter of great pride, particularly to my generation, and that had the opportunity of participating in the freedom struggle itself. Little did I know at that time, when as a student I was going to jail, that a stage would come when 50 years hence, I would be here to talk to you to look back and look forward. I look back, not only the 50 years that have passed, but also promise to you, if whatever contribution I can make in the beginning of the 50 years, because I don't think I'll be here for the 50 years, but this definitely is a fact that the promises that we made, myself, but not myself, I was a very small fry, but on behalf of us all, the nation, by Jawaharlal Nehru, what he called Trieste with destiny. And therefore, when I stand here, I recall that Trieste. And I think that Trieste now we have to re-spell. And that spelling, Mr. Dutta has already challenged to us to spell out. Therefore, when I come here, I am conscious that while talking about this, we have doubts, you have sometimes suspicions, and sometimes you feel that politicians make promises which you don't intend keeping. I'll try to be like that. Whatever I say here and whatever I assure you that my government will try to overcome the setbacks in the recent days particularly. This has been a process which we have been passing through and I'm not sorry for that because I think the greatest thing of India's achievements today is that our political parties may or may not be weak, but the system is strong and firm. I think it's a matter of pride for every Indian, whether this side of the Rosprum or that, that we have in these 50 years built a democratic structure and a society which can change governments but strengthen the government, strengthen this nation. When all this turmoil was going on in this very hall, on the 9th we concluded the NAM conference. And when I was talking in the NAM conference, and some of you who were present here would have noticed that the first people thought that when a NAM conference like that would be called, it would be cancelled. If not cancelled, it would end in <coughs> turmoil. It did not. But it so. It did not show that the government was strong or weak. It showed that India was firmly set its feet in the earth. It can change governments. It can change everything, but the country goes on, its system goes on, democracy goes on. And I take pride in that. I take, I take also pride in the fact that today you friends sitting here have seen in the last 10 days whatever turmoil we were passing through, but you never spelled doubts on the system. And that I think is the strength of the your business community also. I also remember 20 years ago or 30 that even when a fly flew, the businessmen thought the crisis had come. But no doubt, this time it was not there. And for this, I compliment you. And I'm sure that now the Indian industry can look forward to a continuation of reforms, programs, and indeed its deepening and widening. It is significant that in the last three years, the Indian economy has begun to accelerate. The aggressive manner in which the process of liberalization and restructuring was carried forward during the last 10 months under the leadership of my predecessor, Sri Devi Gauda Ji, is well known to all of you. This has already started yielding results. The average growth rate, as you have rightly mentioned, in the last three years, is now about 7%. I remember the days when it was believed 
that what you what was used to call Hindu rate of growth, then we will never be able to pass that. That is a matter of past. And when you talk, then you talk to move from seven percent to eight percent, it encourages me, and it makes me feel proud that we are sitting here having this faith in India, which is now performing and emerging. The new government, which has come into being only this morning, on this behalf, I would like to make very clear that we intend to carry forward the process of liberalization and economic reforms speedily and with determination. In the common minimum program that this government had set forth it before itself under, the, under my predecessor, we have decided to sustain it. In that program, we have set forth for ourselves two objectives, raising the growth rate of the economy and ensuring an equitable distribution and benefits. It is in this framework that we will continue to sustain the governmental policies. Let me assure you, all the representatives and the leading personalities in the business and industry, trade and commerce if present here, that my government shall continue to launch initiatives which will enable India to grow from a major economic power and we enter as we enter the next century. The theme of this conference I have taken note of is thought-provoking. I hold the view that the Indian economy has the resilience and the strength to reach higher levels of growth and it shall be the endeavour of the United Front Government, which I have the honour to head, to provide the enabling environment for such growth rate. Indeed, there is no reason why we cannot strive to achieve the growth rate of 8% GDP. It would be a fitting tribute to this great country if we can take steps to move towards this target during this year, which is the 50th anniversary of India's independence. With the right environment, our economy has the vitality to accelerate. The time is opportune for us to take stock of our progress and also of our policies. But very often he succeeded. <laughs> and I think sometimes he succeeded so fast that I lost going down in glory. And you are stepping down, leaving something which this organization has to learn and from, from this method of function, how organizations can grow and must grow. And your contribution in India's growth is so much good that I want to compliment you. Thank you very much.